quick review of the uh, managed experiments and mechanics that involve the air track. And we'll also do the other one that involves equations of motion, which is the free fall experiment. So just a quick look at these. Okay, they're pretty well done in your notes, but just to be to be clear and to remember, okay, and there are video clips to follow, uh, just seeing the apparatus and seeing how it's operating. So, so I think between the two, we'll be fine. Right, okay, so we, we understand the idea of the air track. So we have our air track, horizontal, okay, horizontal, so that no external gravitational force takes place, okay. Air track, cushion of air must be labelled, okay, I'm not labelling it in here, cushion of air must be labelled, right, uh, to remove friction. So they are the two external forces we want to remove, okay, friction and gravity. Gravity, horizontal air track, uh, friction, air track with cushion of air between air and rider or between air and trolley, okay, rider, the technical term, if you want to call it a trolley, grand, whichever you prefer, okay. And remember then, okay, the way, I think the easier way of doing this, okay, is our light gates, Okay, so we draw in our two light gates and we have a connection to a timer. Okay, so one light gate and the other light gate. Okay, remember they're independent light gates, okay, as you'll see in this thing. Okay, so the first light gate will measure the initial velocity, second light gate will measure the final velocity when you need two light gates. Okay, that's, that's the bottom line. That's your apparatus, that's what you're doing. Okay, first two experiments with velocity and conservation of momentum, right? Velocity and conservation of momentum. If you're in conservation of momentum, we have another uh, rider and you have to label and show your means of attachment. So pin and cork, okay, pin and cork. So what will happen is the uh, first, sorry, rider, let's remember, okay, on top of the riders when we're doing this method, okay, card. And we're interested in the length of the card S. So we'll get the time that the car takes to get through the first right, uh, the first light gate, measure on that, and we have the distance. So to measure velocity, remember, just velocity, our favorite formula, velocity is distance over time, okay? So the distance will be the length of the card, the time will be what we'll read on the timer, telling you how long it took the card to get through the timer, okay? How long the card effectively was blocking the timer, okay? Now, so that's that experiment. So the experiment for, for uh, velocity, is that's it okay you're not using the second uh the second rider and you're not using the second uh timer okay light gate light gate we call them okay second experiment conservation of momentum okay remember in this case back to this famous formula okay right that's your formula okay now in this case remember the second body so we can tidy it up. The second body is stationary at the beginning, so that disappears, okay? And all we're interested in finding is the velocity before and the velocity after. And don't get confused, think you'll get something else. You don't. You're getting a value for the velocity, or sorry, a value for the momentum before, a value for the momentum after, and they should be roughly the same, okay? Right. And you, you make that point at the end, of course, right? So with M1, U1, so you have, you, you measure the mass of this with a, with a balance, okay, including the card, okay? Initial velocity you get as up here using that gate and the time around that the time from that gate. Final velocity you get the time from this gate and the final mass the two of them together. Obviously, if you want to, <coughs> if you want to be very posh, okay, you say that the mass after the velocity here is common, same velocity, okay, because they move off together. So you have the total mass after. Multiply by the total velocity after, or you can leave it in this formula, but you have to be aware that those two v's are the same, one unknown. Okay, you just call both of them v. That's that one. Okay, third experiment. Okay, um, right. Acceleration. Okay, so you're back to the same same setup. Okay, and you have this time, you have a. Uh, what do you call that thing? A pulley, okay, a frictionless pulley or a freely moving pulley, and you have a string, inextensible string if you want, okay, string that doesn't stretch because we don't want to have hooks law involved, okay, and you have a pen here, okay. So to get the acceleration, and again, I took out too much, okay, we have one, uh, we have our two light gates, okay, two light gates, and we have our timer again, so I took out all that, right, okay, so in this case. Right, the formula we're interested in, if you remember this, is V squared is U squared plus 2AS. 
okay you want to get the initial velocity so the velocity using this light gate okay as we did earlier we want to get the final velocity <coughs> the velocity using that light gate we want the distance to travel before we between when we measure the initial velocity and the final velocity which would be the distance using a meter stick between the two light gates okay and we're left with a only a okay so we have a weight here it doesn't matter what the weight is system set up like that let it go this accelerates through here okay you measure the initial velocity as we did over here you measure the final velocity as we did here uh, as we did here for this one okay you measure the distance between here and here okay for that distance and you have your acceleration and you're sorted okay so when you're learning these you're learning the four experiments together okay as you can see final one same setup okay you want to find a relationship between acceleration and force okay there's a little bit of subtlety in this one one little bit of subtlety okay in that remember the issue okay we're accelerating a body this is the body we're accelerating all of that is being accelerated and we want to ex we, we can only have two variables remember so keep going back two variables f equals m a we want the relationship between the force which should be the weight of the pen. Remember, that's the weight of the pen and contents. That's what's applying the force. And we want to find the acceleration, as we will do, as we just did in the previous one, okay? But we must have the mass. The mass that's being accelerated must be kept constant, okay? And the mass that's being accelerated is what I have in red. So remember, the problem we have is, if I want to increase the force, I have to put another weight in here, okay, to change the force. But to do that, the risk is changing the mass of what we're accelerating. So remember how we solve it? We put all our extra weights over here. Uh, this is not to scale, okay, right? And you do it the first time, then you take a weight from the trolley or from the rider and you put it into the pan and you do it again. Okay, so have we changed the force? Yes, we've changed the weight of the pan, okay? Have we changed the mass of the system that's being accelerated? No, we've just redistributed. We just moved the mass from here to here. So the red system, I should have put all them in red, the red system is kept the same. So that's the crucial point. All you do then is you do, you find for a whole series of forces, you find the acceleration. Okay, you're looking for the relationship. So our first graph of the, of the day, y is equal to mx, okay. So put the force in the, to keep it simple, force on the y-axis, acceleration on the x-axis, the slope should be a constant and it's equal to the mass, m equals m, which is a bit confusing. Slope is equal to mass. That's that one, okay? One other one that we're going to just quickly look at is the acceleration due to gravity by free fall because it uses the equations of motion. One second, I'll clean it. Okay, we're back. So the final one, the acceleration of gravity by free fall, which I'm drawing in as well because it uses um, using the equations of motion that we've just been revising. So the equation of motion we're using this time is S is ut plus a half at squared. Okay, we have a ball that starts from rest, so u is zero, so that'll be gone, and it's acceleration to gravity, so that becomes g. So be able to make that adjustment, or know that one off by heart, but both be the case. Okay, that's your formula. Okay, so all we do in this case is we change the distance and we measure the time for the ball to fall. The time for the ball to fall is